Hello everyone and welcome to my first ever attempt at streaming a game Dota. If uh, you found me live for hey, some reason on seconds. Twitch, then I apologize profusely. Uh, this is probably not something you want to watch. It's going to be messy and poorly done, but I'm just trying some things out for my own own benefit. So we're going to hop right into the draft. Streaming a game Dota. We've got uh, if, uh, Wheel Wreck found while me live for some hey, reason on Twitch. Then versus oh, I already apologize profusely. There we go. So, Will Wreck While Whistling versus Void Boys, and uh, this is game two of a best of three. And we've got our first ban outs already. We've got Will Wreck banning the uh, Bat in the Storm, while Void Boys will get rid of the Troll. And uh, Troll meta right now, not too surprised by that. Let's see what they want to go with next. Neither team really revealing a whole lot. And it's a sniper, so that's another uh, pretty normal ban for the state of Dota right now, and uh, doesn't really reveal anything about what they have in mind to do. Wheel Wreck obviously getting rid of that uh, that lockdown from the, uh, the Bat Rider, that disable, that pullback that can disrupt any late game team fight or uh, enable those pickoffs across the map. So, uh, not really something they want to be dealing with. Uh, maybe an indication that they're taking Five it late. Although the Bat Rider can obviously be useful Earth at all stages of the game. Earthshaker first pickup for Wheel Wreck. So that's uh, almost certainly going to be a support hero for IX Mike. But uh, we'll see what they want to do with it. No, he's there off lane. Never mind. I'm not sure which of. Uh, I guess it's either Goody or Derp Derp if it's going to be a support. It could be a core offlane, though. Uh, more and more teams have been running Earthshaker in that core role, so we'll see what they want to do with that. And Ten Void Boys taking their time with their uh, the responses here. Axe. It's going to be an Axe first pick, Shadow followed Fiend. immediately by a Shadow Fiend. Dice so, no surprises here. They're uh, looking to take advantage of that Shadow Fiend's power mid lane and running Axe for the offlane, so he'll be uh, looking to get things done early, help the Shadow Fiend create space for whoever their safe lane carry is, and uh, what are Wheel Wreck going to pick up in response to that? Uh, Void have already banned out the Sniper mid, so uh, that's a good counter to Shadow, that's probably why they took it off the table, so Wheel might want to focus some energy on that mid lane, shut down Shadow Fiend early, and uh, the Earthshaker, a good hero for that. He can uh, sit behind his mid laner, keep him safe, uh, maybe enable some jumps on the Shadow Fiend if he plays too far up. So, a Juggernaut uh, for probably Sleasel in the safe lane. And that's uh, another. This is just 6.83 meta here. Uh, nothing surprising whatsoever. Vengeful Spirit banned out from Wheel. Again, no surprises whatsoever. This is a. Uh, so far, a fairly cookie-cutter draft, and we're seeing heroes banned and picked that have just been staples of this meta. So the uh, Skywrath Mage for Void Boys is the next ban, and uh, support they don't want to deal with uh, in combination with that Earthshaker. Uh, the, the Fisher into the Mystic Flare is a combo we've seen time and time again, and they don't want to go up against that. And uh, I can't really blame them. So... Reserve time. You'd think at this point heroes uh, or teams would know what they want to pick against a Shadow Fiend, but uh, maybe they're taking their time. Still plenty of reserve time left, so they don't want to rush this and maybe. Uh, Maybe having to rethink their plans a little bit, seeing those heroes. Uh, uh, Omni Knight ban from Wheel. That's an interesting choice. And a silencer and then an immediate Phoenix pickup for Void Boys. So I guess this will be Phoenix support. Uh, unless they want to run it off lane and have Axe either in the jungle or they could even have Axe safe lane. Although... Uh, then you're only relying on Shadow Fiend for your late game carry. So we'll see if that's how they end up Radiant doing team. things. And uh, Wheel will pick up the Lena. That could be your mid. Uh, that's a really uh, decent uh, laner against Shadow Fiend. Uh, those long range attacks and the, the magic burst that can come out from her can uh, really wreck Shadow Fiend early. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's your mid lane for Relic. I know he plays that hero 
rather frequently of late, so we'll see if that's where it ends up going. I am really curious about Void Boy's draft here, uh, how they're going to lane this. I imagine the next two heroes... Uh, I'm expecting the Phoenix to be a support, honestly. Um, they could throw me for a loop here, but I think they need another carry. Uh, Axe is... His control is great, but as a as a as a core, you really want someone else who can deal the right clicks. And maybe they think Shadow Fiend is enough, but uh, I would suspect that they'll probably be going for a safe lane here, and that Phoenix will be support. Uh, we didn't really talk about the Silencer ban up from them. Maybe uh, it's probably not wanting to get their their big jump in interrupted. The uh, the axe and the phoenix going in, and uh, the silencer can really rain on that parade and shut that initiation down before it even starts. So, a sensible ban out for them. I like that ban a lot. This is where having a co caster would come in handy. Matt, get on that, buddy. Uh, they're running down their time here. They've still got two picks left, and they're down to ten seconds, so they've got to make up their minds quickly what they want to do ten with this. And to pick. Maybe they're thinking how to support Shadowfiend in the mid lane best. Five seconds Five now. Seconds they're really uh, down to the wire here, and lion. so it's going to be a lion. So another very standard support Don't hero pickup. Pick. Uh, very strong right now. Uh, the, uh, the mana drain will be good against Juggernaut, who can have mana issues in lane, and and the uh, the Lena obviously relies on mana a lot, although she's going to have plenty before too long. Uh, and that instant, uh, if he can pull out a blink dagger, that instant hex can really help blow up heroes like the Juggernaut, who otherwise could just spin away. Uh, Morphling will be Wheel's hero here, and now is that going to be the safe lane farmer? Uh, I'm thinking that might actually be an offlane morph for IX Mike. I've been seeing that more and more Ten recently. Uh, a bunch of teams have been running it, and I really would be surprised if this Five Lena was a, a, a support. Hurry. Teams have been almost exclusively running her as a core recently, and so that would mean that uh, if, if Juggernauts are safe and Lena's your mid, then I guess Morphling would have to be your off. Unless they want to run him as a support, but uh, you're going to have Maybe he needs those levels pretty badly, so I'd be surprised if they run him as a support. The Enigma ban for pick. Void. So, again, they really want their these team fights to go their way. They don't want to face up against any of these big team fight oriented alts. The uh, the Silencer already banned out. The Enigma time. going next, and that makes sense. The the uh, Axe and the Phoenix uh, both want to jump in. Uh, Shadowfiend too with that uh, blink into his uh, Requiem of Souls. So. They don't want uh, Enigma to be able to jump in after and catch some heroes potentially in a big black hole. Last ban for Wheel, and uh, I'm I'm really curious how both sides are actually going to lane this. We've yet to really see exactly what they want to do. A Drow ban, so they are Radiant they're team assuming team. this Phoenix is a is a support as well, and going in to ban out that. Uh, that Drow Ranger worried about the early game aggression that could come out from Void Boys with the Shadow Fiend and the Axe. Uh, if you had a Drow on the field, then uh, their early fight would be a little terrifying. So, fair enough. And uh, now let's see what they want to pick up to round this draft out. So, oh, we'll see if Wheel seconds. is right and they're going for a safe lane carry. Or uh, if they're doing seconds. some hurry, Phoenix hurry. shenanigans. Lifestealer. Life oh, that's an interesting yeah, choice. We have not seen Lifestealer do well at all recently. I think the last game I saw with him was uh, maybe How for VG, and he got crushed. I may be mistaken. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but uh, okay. I mean, you could potentially do some fun things with uh, a Lifestealer bomb inside Phoenix, the dive in and the burst out. Uh, only ten seconds. Hmm, he's easily kited by the Jug and the Lena, though. Five seconds. And the Earthshaker. Uh, he could have a tricky game. Reserve time. Earthshaker's really good at just blocking him out and not letting him get on the target he wants to. 
Um, we'll see. That's uh, an interesting pickup, and uh, that'll almost certainly be Pat's hole in the safe lane. And Wheel, they probably weren't expecting that pickup, so let's see what they're going to give us a response. A Tinker! Okay, so it is going to be Alina support. Uh, with Tinker in the mid lane, uh, Relic handling that hero, and it'll be Sleasel safe lane on the Juggernaut. Uh, okay, we've got ourselves a ball game, and this will be an interesting one. Uh, a couple of heroes that we don't see all that often in amid these uh, these very very 6.83 drafts, the first three picks at least for each team, and we'll see what these heroes can get done. Um, Lena, Tinker, very squishy cores that if uh, Life Stealer can get on them, he can absolutely blow them up in the in the space of that uh, rage, that magic immunity. So, uh, with that said, let's uh, introduce the team. For Void Boys, on your Radiant side, we've got Mercy Please. Looks Let's like he's going off lane on that axe. Today. Beyond Mid on the Shadow Fiend. Pat Soul safe lane on the Life Stealer. And we've got Omega Poner and Fly supporting on your Phoenix in line, respectively. For the Dire, we've got Sleasel on the Juggernaut. Looks like he's going safe. We've got Goody on the Lena. Derp Derp on the Earthshaker. Relic on that Tinker going mid. And Morphling. Ix Mike going for your offlane morph. That'll be. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And looks like uh, they're contesting the bottom rune. Radiant is going for the top, so might not be a clash here as each team has staked out their territory and uh, want to make sure they get at least one of those delicious, delicious bounty runes. Those extra bonus XP and gold from the first one. And uh, Petzl is hanging around the bottom here. Uh, not sure he'll want to contest against this. Uh, Ix Mike hasn't leveled anything up yet, so he could go for that Adaptive Strike first. And with Derp Derp and Lena, you could have a big chain stun following that up, so risky for him to go in. Uh, we'll see what he ends up doing. Uh, here we go. And it's going to be uncontested. Uh, looks like Beyond will take it mid, going for that early, early bottle and... Uh, Relic will get it in the bot lane doing... Oh, he isn't quite rushing the bottle. Unless it's coming out on the courier. No, just some tangos, so... Yeah, so he's he's uh, going to be a little slower in the bot rush, but uh, we'll see what Beyond can do here. This, uh, I'm not sure who this matchup really favors. Uh, either hero could get off to a good start and just end up crushing. And Already we've got Fly rotating mid, maybe looking for the courier, but uh, I don't think he's going to find it. They saw him and... Yeah, sure enough, there goes the curry around the, the safe way. In the trees where it's safe. They die. Radiant did block out a camp here, wanting to uh, prevent the Tinker from getting any stacks early. And and we'll see. We'll just... Uh, Goody zoning out. It's a dual lane off. Okay, so we got the, the Phoenix and uh, the Axe together here in the off lane. And uh, this, uh, this could be tricky. They're both running 2-1-2. Oh, no, two in the mid for uh, for Wheel, uh, the Earthshaker protecting Relic, and so it's a 2v2 in the top lane here, and uh, 2v1 in the bot lane. Petzl, let's see, how are they doing for farm? Tinker's uh, doing pretty good against this, this Shadow Fiend early. I mean, he can retreat to the jungle, and he's got his bottle already bottle crowing, uh, so he'll be getting those souls and uh, not much Tinker can do to stop him. Beyond can always just retreat to the jungle. So, uh, But the rest of them, Life Stealer's doing quite well uh, up against the Morphling here. And Oh, safe. Uh, top lane, Mercy Please getting very low. He's going down here. This is going to be your first blood. And uh, Sleaze will take that on the jug. So thank you very much for that. Gold influx, he says. And that'll be a great start for him. And uh, this lane could get a little scary for Void Boys. If uh, they give away too many of those early, Mike going, taking his time here. Now looks like he's going for tranquils, and uh, he's uh, he's going to get his farm in the in this off lane. There's not really a whole lot the Boyd boys can do to to zone him out. He's got that early point in waveform, and he'll be able to to get away if they go on him. Looks like wheels coming in, going for the block. Uh, he just misses it. If he got it on the other side, they maybe could have gone in. 
Uh, Tinker does have two points up in that laser and one in heat-seeking missile, so they maybe could have gone for some damage. Bottom lane, stun on IX Mike, uh, the followed by the Hex. Patsos wants this, but yeah, he's he's fine. He's gonna take a lot of damage, pop his salve, and he'll be able to stay in lane and do okay here. Uh, Tinker, your last hit leader, more or less. He's uh, he's doing quite well for himself, but uh, oh yeah, he's uh, he's actually doing considerably better than this Shadow Fiend here, beyond uh, reduced to just constantly bottle crowing to try and get any last hits here. and So that'll be good. Uh, shutting him down even a little bit early can help. Of course, he will be able to catch up, but uh, we'll maybe Void Boys have gone for this uh, face rush kind of style here, and uh, maybe slowing that Shadow Fiend down will give them a bit of an edge if they uh, as they go into the mid, mid game here and top lane. Wheel, Derp Derp and Goody, they're sitting around, but their be their movement's being started out by this ward, so uh, Omega's gonna play nice and safe. He doesn't want to get caught out here and he should be fine. Yeah, this is all being spotted and they're they're keeping him back quite far though. Uh, he's how is he doing for levels? Well he's actually doing fine. He's he's level three and uh, that matches the more or less matches the boy uh, the Morphling's level in this off lane for the dire. And Axe has just left the top lane for Omega Poner and has gone straight to jungling and he's got his tranquils up and so he'll be able to take advantage of that jungle, uh, get that greed going. So it's uh Omega will get some decent levels here while at, with Axe uh, retreating to the jungle and uh, that's really good for Void Boys because uh, he is a greedy hero as far as levels go. If he can get those levels up um, he can do a lot more in the team fight eventually wanting that uh, of course level 16 for the level 3 supernova that extra difficult to bring down egg there and uh, so with the solo off lane he, he is getting he is getting his experience. Uh, one sec. Sorry about that for any helpless fool watching this in Twitch for some reason. Don't do that. I'm a noob. Uh, you're not going to enjoy this cast. Go see uh, the BTS boys do it. Uh, they'll, they'll be doing a much better job. Uh, Omega, he's fine. He's a little low, but uh, he's got he's almost has his, enough for his tranquils. And so he'll retreat to the base, heal back up, but uh, he's getting what he needs out of this so far. Uh, Void boys, a lot of heroes hanging in the jungle here. Fly, he uh, he's sitting at level three. hasn't really done a whole lot this game. It feels like so far. I mean, he's been trying to zone out Ix Mike, but Mike is five and he's doing just fine. He's getting a lot of XP as this off lane, and his last hits aren't too bad either at thirteen. And so he will uh, be able to contribute quite a lot. I feel like uh, as the game goes later, and Morphling can always sort of transition into more of a core, more of a damage dealer if he gets the space to do so. So we'll see. Uh, derp Derp just strolling through to this mid lane making sure that Relic's still doing fine and he's already got his uh, his soul ring up and working on his travels and he's uh, he's having a pretty great time mid here. Uh, crushing beyond at this point at uh, 41 to 25. That's uh, that's a big disparity here, and the levels show that. Level 7. Oh, here's the fight. There's the block, the Dragon Slay from Goody, but they're not going to have any further lockdown. That uh, that Fisher from Earthshaker pushing them back, but not locking anyone in for a kill. So, Void Boys, they'll go back to the jungle, and uh, Beyond will continue trying to do what he can here in this mid. Uh, is anyone stacking for him? Uh, got a bit of a stack going on this safe, this big camp here, and... Meanwhile, Mercy Please is farming here, so they need to make sure they leave some space for this uh, Shadow Fiend to catch back up. He's not had a, the ideal start. And, and meanwhile, Safe Lane, Patsoul is doing quite well on this Life Stealer. He's gone for the Midas early. Uh, it's not really contested in his farm, so that's a perfectly good choice. And he'll be ramping up his farm with that, uh, looking to turn into that beastly Life Stealer later on in the game. 
Omega, oh, still doing okay. He's uh, he's level five, so he and Axe are about equal in levels. A little behind the Morphling, but uh, they're uh, overall they're doing just fine here. And I think um, it's a fairly quiet early game. No, no one's been looking to to really get too active on the map. And uh, Mercy Please just stacking this jungle. Tranquils will heal him up, and he'll take that. And both sides content just to farm and see what they can get done. Uh, they both have a fairly strong late game lineup. Uh, I'm not sure I can say which is better. Uh, it'll all depend how this mid game turns out. And uh, with both teams content to just relax and let the laning phase progress, um, we'll uh, we'll see who moves first. So Sleasel farming up here, how's he doing? 57 and 22, just about even with the Life Stealer and the Radiant Safe Lane, so he's very, very happy working on that Mask of Madness, and he'll have it soon. Uh, just a couple more waves, and haven't really had a chance to push the tower, but then neither has Pat Soul, so they'll be just fine with that. And Relic, he's getting very, very close to those boots of travel, and at that point, uh, he's going to become very elusive, uh, Once, especially once he gets that Blink Dagger, which... Uh, He's uh he's on track to get a nice early one if if uh, Void Boys don't want to contest this. And meanwhile, Sleasel diving past the tier one, farming up nothing Omega Poner can do but sit and uh, try and suck up some XP here. And Derp Derp's coming in, but I don't think they're going to be able to get a kill. They have planted this nice aggressive observer here though, so they're going to see rotations to this tier one if uh, they're going to see if Void wanted to Void Boys want to defend. And here comes the push. So Sleasel healing war down. Uh, going to town on this tower, and Omega's going to come in and try and contest, and uh, looks like that might be enough to force them back. Derp Derp's coming in, but uh, with that dive still up, the, he can't really block Omega Poner in, and it'll be fine. So that's the end of that little push there. Uh, rotating wheel supports back out, and securing that mid rune, maybe for... Oh, Goody will take it. Okay. Meanwhile, Patsul getting some pressure on this tier 1, uh, but uh, it'll take him a little longer to push than Juggernaut, uh, that healing ward, and really helping out, and it looks like he's got his Mask of Manus, it's going to be coming out on the Courier soon. So, again, three heroes top for real, and uh, they're pressuring this tower hard, but Void Boys smoked up on Fly and Mercy, please. They're looking for the jump in, and not quite Blink Dagger territory on Mercy. He still has a, a few hundred gold to go, so... This isn't going to be the easiest initiation. We'll have to see if they are able to catch anyone. Sleasel. Pressuring the tower. They're going to have... Here, here comes Tinker, and they've got the glyph popped. Tinker's setting up his marches, so... Void Boys aren't going to be able to go in. There's the Hex. Ursp. Oh, big jump from Phoenix, but... He gets blown up, probably by the Lena. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Tinker, with the laser, and uh, my team fight casting is very, very poor, but Void Boys will come out, or Wheel will come out far ahead on that, taking down the Phoenix and taking down that tower as well, so that's, uh, that's going to mean the Tinkers and Jugger, your number one and two positions on net worth, although Lifestealer is not too far behind, but uh, the Shadow Fiend hasn't had the greatest start. He's... Uh, He's just over 1k behind his counterpart there, the Tinker in the mid lane. And Relic's on the move now. He's uh, He's got his boots, and he's farming up this Radiant Jungle, doing the 3 stack, and man, he's gonna he's really close to this Blink Dagger already. He's gonna have it very, very soon, and this is a fast Blink. He's gonna be very hard to deal with unless they can get a good Blink Call from your Axe or a Blink Hex from your Lion. They do have ways to deal with him, but uh, you don't really want your Tinker to have this big a start. Ike's Mike still doing fine here in the off lane. He's got his tranquil soul ring up and another thousand gold on top of that. He might be going for the blink dagger. We saw, uh, I think it was Universe do that build when he played off lane void a couple days ago. So, see if no, it was on. It was on secret. It was I. So, oh, big ult from Lena and he rages and hops inside a creep. Can he get away from this? It looks like he will. He hasn't revealed. 
which one he is, and yeah, he's going to be fine. So nice jump out there. He was, he got very, very low, but, and his team are here to support him now. Hex from Lion on IX Mike, and that's what will jump out and rage and retreat. Uh, oh, huge damage from the Lena and the Earthshaker there. Just following up that rocket from Relic and just blow up the Lion. So, uh, dangerous to be a low health support in this game if you're Void Boys and between these uh, these bursty heroes there's uh, not much the line could do. Uh, Beyond has moved to the safe lane just trying to get farm where he can. Looks like he's rushing that Yule Scepter and we'll see if he's able to get anything done with that. Meanwhile Sleasel uh, sees this nice juicy ancient stack on the Radiant side and I'll take that thank you very much. They got this war to give him warning if anyone comes up to contest and uh, they'll be very happy to take that. Pat's in the mid lane now, uh, maybe feeling that the Shadow Fiend can't farm there anymore, and they looking like they maybe want to push. So the line has a smoke, so maybe they're looking for a smoke play here. Three gathered together in their own woods, and we'll see what they... No, he just drops it. Okay, Axe is going to take it. Axe wants to solo smoke. He doesn't need anyone's help. Fly taking some farm in the mid lane here. Uh, he really wants to get up to those Tranquils, and... Give him a bit more survivability. Meanwhile, the dire ancients are getting stacked as well. But uh, Void Boys have vision of this, so if someone goes in to farm that, they can maybe look to contest. And Ix Mike, getting him his farm on. He's about the same net worth as the Axe, so that's a little farther behind. But Axe was jungling, so that's that's good for him. And uh, he's got he's definitely got what he needed out of this off lane. Mega Poner. Looks like he's going for the Mac. Uh, unless it's a pipe, but... Uh, and uh, the armlet is up on Pat's hole, so that's pretty good timing for him. He's uh, he's still holding steady with the with the Jug and the Tinker, and... Oh, Sleasel soloing the Roche right now. Did they see him come in? I didn't catch if he had a smoke up, but... Doesn't look like the Radiant's responding, and meanwhile, Shadow Fiend just boom! That damage just too ridiculous. Meanwhile, Pat Solo gets on nice dunk from Mercy, and they'll just retreat. Don't want to fight in that march. And so it's a one-for-one one across the map. Uh, I think the wheel will be happy with their pick, though. I think you'd rather have your Lena go down by the core. Shadow Fiend and Sleasel, meantime, gets that uh, Aegis completely uncontested, so he'll be very happy with that, and maybe we'll look to get something done on the map now. Maybe push into this mid-tower, where they're starting to group up, and see what's uh, Ticker got. He's got his blink and he's well on his way to another item already. 15k up on him. He's having a, just a great time. 8,000 net worth at 15 minutes. He's uh, been completely uncontested. Oh, where's the jump? I missed that. I have no idea where that happened. My bad. So, jump into the mid tower. And, oh, big dive from Omega. Gets the... Oh, that's a sick ultimate from him. Yules from Beyond, and that's an easy raise. Finally, Tinker goes down, and they needed that kill badly. That was a really nice setup from Omega, getting the dive in and and uh, ulting just before the Tinker could bring him down. So nice play from your Phoenix, and uh, that's a that's a two for zero across the map, and a really nice pick. Uh, Tinker was getting a little out of control, so slowing him down is gonna be the. The goal for Void, for Void Boys is they want to continue to have a presence in this mid-game. Uh, still staying relatively close. Oh, Fly? Fly getting very low. Not respecting the range that which uh, Wheel can pump out that damage. The Fisher from Earthshaker and then that Dragon Sleeve from Lena. That's some long-range damage they can put out. And meanwhile, Sleasel, solo pushing bottom lane. He's got a DD up and he's pushing that wave out fairly hard. Already, uh... A Yasha up on him, maybe looking to go for that Sanjin Yasha, or maybe just casual and goes into a Scotty here or something else, but we'll see. He can do whatever he wants. He's top of your net worth now after that kill on Tinker, so he's doing quite well for himself. And rotating through, just not a care in the world, clearing up this Radiant jungle. And uh, the Radiant don't know what's going on. Ix Mike, he's, uh, he's ready to jump here. That maxed out Adaptive Strike, he can really lock someone down wrong. And 
He's waiting for them to come up to defend this tower while the rest of his team push in. Meanwhile, Void Boys, they don't want anything to do with this. They're rotating top and they're going to try and go for an exchange, it looks like. Don't want to defend. They're aware that uh, they're a bit outmatched at this point in the game, so wise of them to dodge the fight. And, and Wheel will take this mid tower, so that's uh, three towers from them at 17 minutes. Uh, the, the space on the Radiant side is getting a little constricted, and they're going to be able to defend this Tier 1. Patzel is not going to take it down fast enough, and you get the wraparound from your Sleasel. The rest of the heroes coming in. Are they going to get out in time? And, oh, miss the call. Omni Slash on Mercy doing a lot of damage, and there's the Fisher to help him finish it off. So that's a nice kill on the Axe. Meanwhile, Beyond gets caught. Cell fuels, but that's not going to save you, buddy. Dragon Slave to finish him off. So, 2 for 0 as uh, we all come in defend the tower, and get a couple pickoffs as well. This, uh, this Shadow Fiend, really not his game. He's now uh, following farther and farther behind the cores of of uh, Wheel, and it's, uh, it's a difficult game. They've got a lot of bursts for him, and unless he gets off that BKB. Oh, Void, your uh, fly has just obliterated that long stun from IX Mike, and then the burst from Relic. Easy kills if you're caught out here, and that's... Three down, and they're pushing into this tier two. Sleazel manning up with that healing ward, and uh, they can't really contest this. Mercy, please. He's got his blink up and an urn on top of that, but it's dangerous to go in. He doesn't have any support, and uh, well, we will play it safe, and they'll just step back a little bit. And and oh, Goody invised up. He's looking to come in, and who's he gonna find? Not sure. Oh, there's the stun on Omega Poner, the stun from Lena, and the follow-up for Alt is just disgusting. But there's the call. Stun, finger from Fly, and Sleazel may go down here. He's taking a lot of damage, but oh, the Fisher, the er, Echo Slam, it's a cleanup crew here. Uh, Aegis popped, but uh, he's fine, and they're still looking to pick off more as there's a long stun onto Patzel. Here comes Sleazel again, wanting Fly, and Fly... Is certainly going to go down here. Meanwhile, Patzel will take down Derp Derp and manning up on Mike, but there's the stun and Sleazel comes in to clean up the job. That's five down for your Void Boys and only two for Ra for Wheel. That's a that's a hard one team fight. And with that, Jug now 4K ahead of the uh, the Life Stealer, 16K up on him on top of his Sanjin Yasha, and they're going to take this tower. I don't think that uh, that Void can contest, although with that Aegis down, maybe Wheel don't want to pressure it too much. They'll, yeah, they'll back off and take what they've got. That's a, a massive gold swing. Let's see what they've got here. Yeah, poo, that's a dive. We're looking at almost a 10k lead for Wheel now, and uh, the XP's about the same position, so they're doing quite well for themselves. And Beyond, he's uh, still just got that Yules. Not a great game for him, and... He would really love that BKB just to try and deal with all the magic damage coming up from Wheel, but that's a long ways away, and I'm not sure he's going to have even the time to get it. Uh, Mercy, please. Could be going for that BKB as well. In fact, I would really think he should. Uh, facing up against Wheel's lineup here, and oh, the TP in from Tinker, long stun on Omega Poner, and boom! That's such a great combo. The stun from IX Mike gives Relic time to pour it in and just blow up anyone they find alone. I, I don't think Void can... Void Boys can have anyone farming that kind of position anymore. They gotta be grouped up and playing it cautious because that burst damage is is no fun. And meanwhile, Derp Derp, he's got a gem and wanting to restrict the Void Boys up in their base even more as they'll they've taken three towers, now they'll continue to push an on in and try and get rid of Void Boys vision and prevent them from feel, feeling safe on the map with this tanker who can port in wherever he wants and the IX Mike is just going on these gank ganking expeditions, uh, just looking for heroes. And if he finds someone and, and there's a creep wave close Dying enough, then that TP in from Relic will just all oh, bloodstone up on him. And he's uh, he's pretty confident that uh, he's in a great shape, and he's not worried about being able to put out damage. He wants to go for that sustain, and I think that's a great choice. This game, the way things are going, he's going to rack up those bloodstone charges and and be able to contribute even more to these fights. Wheel just pushing at the lanes a little bit. And look at look at Void Boys, they're so scared. Three heroes grouped up in jungle farming together, and they have to. If they don't, they're going to get picked off one at a time, and so they'll take what they can get. Meanwhile, 
wheel is spreading the map. You got Sleasel farming ancients, Relic farming the jungle. Their efficiency is just so much greater. And long stun on Bian, ultimate from Goody, and just there's so much damage with that stun coming out from Myx Mike and the follow-up stuns from Derp Derp and and the Lena. There's not much you can do if you're caught. You're caught, and now Fly's turn to get jumped on. Dragon Slave, Morphling over the top with the waveform and easy kills. Three for zero across the map, and Sleazel wicked sick. And well, Wood Boys they try and group, and then they still get jumped and killed. So it's not a great game for them. Tinker coming in completely no fear, just pushing out this wave while his buddy Goody takes the bottom and. Goody's already got his ags up as their position for Lena. He's having a great time. 0, 2, and 7. But he's getting his farm. 60 lats hits on him for a support. That's not too bad. And just the uh, the tower gold is also contributing a lot to his ability to farm here. So Sleazel taking away those Radiant Ancients. No farm for you, Void Boys, he says. And uh, the map is getting mighty small for your Void Boys. They've got these two wards in the mid lane, but at this point... Those aren't doing too much as the push is coming in on the bottom and they're blind to where it counts. While as Void uh, Wheel have this excellent high ground ward here, they're able to see Void coming in and Mercy is smoked. Looking for that jump in, but Wheel, they're all sitting back behind Goody here. I'm not sure. Oh, there's the jump call on Goody. Stun from Fly. Are they going to be able to get the dunk off here? Finger of death and dunk. Yeah, they will claim him, but it's only one kill. They want more. Phoenix is pursuing Derp Derp here. Uh, got the slow on him, and there's your Fisher to hold him back. Mercy blinked in and trapped by the Fisher there. That's uh, not what you want. And so they do get a pick, but it's only on your four position, Lena. And so I guess at this point, worth any kill is uh, is good when you're this far behind. But they need more, and I don't think Wheel is gonna want to give it to them. Mercy farming up in the jungle, still only that Blink Dagger earn. Although he's got almost 3k up on him, so. He's getting close to that BKB if he wants it, and I imagine that'll be his choice. Meanwhile, Sleasel, look at that guy run. He's so fast, and he's got that Invis rune up looking for a pick, seeing if he can find someone with Ix Mike there for the stun. If they catch anyone, it's a dead hero, but uh, Void is very scared. They're grouping in the jungle, farming together, and let's see. Do they have a smoke? Are they looking for a play here? No. They're just farming up. Maybe looking to jump into the Roche. There's your... Infest into Mercy, please. So they're looking for a jump here, but... Uh, are they going to see this? They see Mercy, and looks like Sleasel's hanging around the Roche Pit here. They don't want to give it up, and they're thinking that... Oh, blink in from your Morphling, looking to find someone, but doesn't have a chance to get the stun. He will deward, though. He's got that gem. I wonder, is that... Yeah, that's Derp Derp's. It was originally taken away, but he's got it now, and... Well, posturing around the Roche pit, neither side wants to give this up, but uh, Void have to pull back. They've got Tinker pushing in their top lane, and if uh, if Void retreat to defend this, then Sleasel's going to have no problem taking this Roche. It's almost up, just a couple seconds away, and they're going to stay in the pit till this spawns. Yes, they will, so he'll go right on that, and with creeps in their base, Void boys have to decide what they want to do. They Do they back and defend their tower, or do they jump in on this? They... They suspect it's happening now, but uh, with Marks of the Machines to cover and Sleasel with that damage, he's already got Roche basically dead, and so Void, unable to contest, that's a free Roche for Sleasel, and not too much damage on your Tier 3, so that's not too bad, but uh, Wheel will certainly be happy with that, and uh, another smoke on Goody looking to maybe waltz into the jungle here, and Ix might cleaning up the vision for Radiant Side, they can maybe get a pick here, and turn that into a tier 3 push with that Aegis up on Sleasel, so we'll see what they want to do. Sleasel pushing into the tier 2. He's uh, posturing up, and Void Boys, they have to get something done here. They can't just continue to feed these towers away. Obviously, they'll try and make their defense at the tier 2, but just happy to get that free tower, and uh, they're they're completely trapped. All their vision's down. The gem from Ix Mike doing work, and they're just completely contained inside their base right now, and Sleasel looking like he wants to push in that top lane, have all lanes at the base, and Tinker doing the same in the bottom lane here. They want to get all the creeps right up to Radiant Space before they try and make a push in, and yes. they should be able to do it now. Void boys, 
They want to make a jump. They're worried that uh, this is a bit of a bait, but Sleasel's alone. But with that Aegis, he's confident that uh, he's not going to come into any harm. And he's right, he just falls back and farms up the jungle. So, Void Boys, not a lot they can do. This uh, net worth for Juggernaut is disgusting. He's almost double the lead farmer on Void Boys. And, oh, well, not much Lifestealer can... It's not a great game for Lifestealer. This is... This hero is... Uh, He's not able to get as much done early as your heroes like your sleep, your Juggernaut and your Troll, and uh, he's kind of fallen off for that reason, and you can see why in this game, uh, Void Boys took control early, and he's had no space. He even goes for a BKB, that's desperation. That is not the item you want on your, on your life stealer. He's already got that magic immunity from the Rage, but I guess he's now got 6 seconds of that and the 10 seconds, so 16 seconds of magic immunity. I'm just not sure it's going to be enough because, I mean, you're not taking magic damage in that time, but where's where's your damage? What are you doing with that magic immunity? So, we'll see what he can get done. Beyond has picked up that Blink Dagger, so he's still very squishy. He's got the initiation, but Void Boys haven't been able to take a fight, and uh, I'm kind of a little surprised by this item choice. Maybe he feels he doesn't have an option and just joints the, the rockets coming in, and we'll just TP home. But uh, really not completely 100% sure that that was the best itemization for him. As, well, they're kind of in a bit of a pickle here. They they need to be able to do damage, but uh, they the magic coming out from from your wheel squad is just so intense. And Sleasel may get jumped here. Axe is looking for it, but he's still got that Aegis up for a healthy time. And Oh, Hex! But they just want to get out. They're running away, and with good reason. Sleasel's coming in. Stun on him. Your uh, Tinker jumping in with a Scotty now. Oh, and a just... That's your Abyssal Blade used on a Lion. And with It's now a 4v5 on the field, and uh, are we going to use this opportunity to push in high ground? It looks like they will. And boy, boys, with, with one hero down, they really don't want to walk into this march, and... With the lack of PKBs on everyone except your your life stealer, they really can't just they just can't go in on this. So it's going to be a free tier three. It might even be free racks. Although if Void Boys can't contest this racks, then I don't know what they're doing still in this game because uh, they've they've got to be able to hold. Oh, there's your jump in from your axe. They blow up Goody really fast with the life stealer bomb. But there's your Jugger ulti just destroying these heroes, and Patsol's going to go down. Sleasel finishes him off godlike for him with a double kill, and that's it. Void Boys tap out. There was nothing they could do. That was their last hurrah, trying for that jump, and, well, they got a kill, but 8-22. to That was just a disgusting show of dominance from your wheel squad, and they'll take it. That's 2-0, uh, and uh, that's your series, so thank you if you've been listening. This is my first ever cast, and uh, I hope it wasn't awful. Sorry that my team fight skills are just not what they should be, but I'll, uh, I'll work on that. And 10-0 for your jug. He had a fantastic time. 756 gold per minute. What a what a great showing for for your wheel squad. And with that, I'm Sindar. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.